What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I thought I'll go over my trades that I took yesterday on Euro Pound. A lot of you have been messaging me and asking me, can you explain how I took these trades? So here it is. Now, just so that you know, everything that I'm about to tell you now is of my own opinion. This is not financial advice. I'm not a Forex guru. I just trade Forex and do what I do best. <laughs> anyway, let's roll the intro. Okay, so let's get started. So as you can see, I took three trades on Euro Pound yesterday. Um, I did take a few more trades as well on a couple of other pairs. Pound CAD, I do believe in USD CAD. Um, USD CAD was a loser for me. Um, Pound CAD did take a little bit of profit off of that, wasn't too shabby. And then I was able to capitalize here on Euro Pound. So let's start off on the 4H time frame and take a look at what we see. So before I took the trades, this is how the market was looking. Now you can clearly see the structure of this market. It's pretty simple. Um, the market is pushing to the upside and uh, we can see price was making higher highs and higher lows. Now the way I trade is I'm looking for price just to continue forming this structure. And as long as this structure continues to form, then I'm continuing to look for buys no matter what. Now I do take reversals. Well, not reversals. I do take exhaustion trades, as you would see in my last video. I explain how I do them. Uh, I, if I see price topping out in an overextended market and I see wick rejections, then I'd be looking to ride the market back down to around 50% of a previous leg before then pushing back to the upside. But as you can see here with this example, we had a major structural high, and then we can see this shift to the downside. Now I'm looking to take trades around retest levels in the market. I'm looking to take trades around 50% area just to make sure that I get a good strong pullback that's visible and it's uh, yeah viable for me to continue looking for those buys. But look what we have here. Price continue to push strong to the downside into this key level. And as you can see, once price pushed into the key level, we did have a shift for about four hours, including the one that bounced off of this, uh, as you can call it, trend line, yeah? And uh, look what happened. It just came crashing down. Now, once the market does this, I view this as a brick wall. And if price is trading above this, as I said already, I'm looking for those buys. The minute price starts to break below this structure, then in the back of my mind, you know what I'm saying? There must be a reversal in play. So now I'm not going to say to myself, well, now it's time to slam sells. What I'm going to look for the market to do is create structure that resembles a sell bias market, which is a strong push to the downside, pull back, strong push to the downside, pull back, and then look to take my trades in and around these levels here. Now, I'm not in a rush to jump into the market. I'm not looking to be first in. I know that if the market's going to trend, it's going to trend for a period of time. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong and I'll step out and I'll wait for another opportunity or I'll go to a different pair to trade. But as you can see here, once we have this first push phase, which is this, the first pullback and a second push phase, now we can start to anticipate this trend has reversed from this uptrend to now a potential downtrend. So when I'm looking at the structure of the market, what I'm looking at now is to figure out key levels that I can trade. So first things first, so those that follow me on YouTube will see my weekly Forex Outlook and reviews. I'm going to take my major structural high and then I'm going to take my major structural low. Once I take these levels, I'm going to start working within them. And as you can see, with this strong push face to the downside, I'm looking for price to either come back to a retest area in the market or I'm looking for price to pull back to around 50% of the previous leg to then look for that lower high formation continuation to the downside. Once we see that the market has created that pullback to around 50% with these wick rejections, now what I'm anticipating the market to do is eventually create that structure again, which is a push phase, continuation, break the previous structural low to continue to confirm that sell by a structure. So when I see that the market has broken below this previous structure after making the lower high formation and the new lower low formation, now I know it's game. Now, I could have looked for trading opportunities in and around here if I was at my charts at the time or looking at the right pair at the time. But if I'm not, then guess what? We can't trade it. So when I came to the charts, it was my time to look for a trading opportunity. So once I can see that the market has broken below this previous structural low, created this new lower low, now I'm looking for the exact same thing again. I'm looking for price to pull back 
to create that low high, that break, and then eventually come back to a market or area in the market where we can look for that retest continuation. So now as we see the market has broken below this structure, what I'm looking for the market to do is eventually pull back to create some sort of wick rejections to indicate a retest of that structure and show that after this push phase exhaustion phase, that this exhaustion is depleting. These wick rejections are resembling bullish pressure into structure, depleting, creating lower high formations and that the bears are potentially stepping back into the market. We didn't just get one wick rejection, we have two and we have three. Now, once this has happened, what I'm looking for the market to do is create momentum. That just simply means I'm looking for the market to start showing signs of a trend reversal, not on the higher time frames, but on the lower time frames. So the first trade that I done was on the 15 minute time frame. And as you can clearly see, we'll go over trade number one. This was actually a one to six risk reward ratio trade. And the reason why it was so good is because I was able to hit this trade up at the top, which was fantastic. So I just mentioned that I'm looking for a trend reversal on the lower time frames. Now you might be saying, well, the trend on the 4H time frame is down rocks. So why are you looking for a trend reversal on the 15 minute time frame? Well, remember, on the 4H time frame, the current phase that we're in was a push phase and now we're currently in an exhaustion phase. We have signs of wick rejections that's indicating bearish pressure. So on the lower time frames, what I'm going to be looking at is a market structure pushing to the upside. Now, I don't sell in a buy bias market or a trend, should I say. What I do sell in is an area in the market where prices either create in lower lows and lower highs, indicating a bearish trend, or I'm looking for the market to create a level in the market to indicate that price is failing to break above to continue a bullish trend. So if we look at the example that we have here, we can see that at the moment on the 15 minute time frame, price is creating an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. Now, what do we see? We see a higher low formation here. And after the higher low is formed, we expect the higher high to be formed. But look what happens price fails to break above it. Same situation, just like on the 4H time frame, we see multiple wick rejections here indicating continued bearish pressure. Now this is a very strong sign for me. Once I see this double top in an uptrend and price failing to push up and continue to make that new higher high, along with the fact that on the 4H time frame we've just entered that exhaustion phase and we're now getting multiple wick rejections, the overall trend on the 4H is down Added with this confluence, now in the back of my mind, I'm saying, well, look, 4H exhaustion is depleting. We see bullish pressure is depleting with multiple wick rejections. This may just be the time to look for that continuation on the 4H time frame to take advantage of my sales on the 15 minute time frame. And that's exactly what I did. I identified all that information. I saw the wick rejections. And as you're going to see, the market decided to continue to reject that area for a period of time and then continue to push to the downside. Now, this was an absolute beautiful trade. And to be honest with you, I was really, really happy with this. One to six risk to reward ratio held that for as long as I could. And uh, in actual fact, the market just pushed down within the space of an hour or just over an hour and 15 minutes to hit target number one. Now, what do we see here continuing on through the day? Well, we can see that the trend line's been broken. What did we see on the 4H time frame? Once that bullish trend line was broken, we're looking for price to make that push phase, exhaustion phase, look for those lower highs and then look for that continuation. So right now we are currently in what phase in the market? We're in a push phase. So now I'm looking for the market to exhaust and I'm looking for the market to create those wick rejections and those lower high patterns to look for a continuation. What I did is I went down to the lower time frames to take advantage of some really tight entries so that I can minimize my risk and maximize my reward just by minimizing the range that I'm taking my trades within. I identify this as a very strong push phase in the market. I know that the 4H candles are really strong to the downside at the moment. I know the momentum's strong and I don't wanna miss taking any trades. So I head down to the five minute time frame to try and look for some tight entries so that I can take advantage of the range of these candles. As you can see here, we have a one to three with a free pip stop loss 
and a uh, nine pip target, which is insane. But that's what happens when you scale down. So now again, I'm looking for the price to create some sort of wick rejections in the market. And as you can clearly see here with the trend on the five minute time frame, it's really, really strong to the downside on euro pound. It's not really showing any signs of strong pullbacks. So I'm just looking for really strong wick rejections. And I'm also looking for areas in the market where price is broken below again that push phase and then looking for that exhaustion phase back into that key level and that's exactly what happened as you can see the market pulled back into this key level after the break exhausted created those wick rejections and then as you can see here within about 10 minutes i was out of this trade again i was very happy with the way structure was forming i still was really happy with the way price was creating these lower lows and lower highs I was very aware that on the 4H time frame, we have now truly entered that continued push phase after we exhausted, created those wick rejections. So now we're creating lower lows. And what I want to be doing is taking this trade as long as I possibly can until this market structure tells me otherwise. Or on the 4H time frame, we start to get wick rejections to indicate that bullish pressure that strong push phase has ended and now we may be ready to enter that exhaustion phase again. So while we're still in this push phase, I'm slamming sales, taking trades with the trend. I'm not changing my bias. I'm not be trying to be too smart. I'm not anticipating a reversal and I continue to trade. By this time, I already posted this on my Instagram stories. I was really excited after a slow week and then I was just like, look, let's take another trade again. As you can see here, we're getting multiple wick rejections, price broke structure, exhausted back into a key level in the market where it's retesting. This is where I took my third and final trade of the day. And as you can see, again, we had a strong shift in momentum back to the downside. Price retested that structure, came back a little bit. I was thinking, ah, oh, we may be stopped out at this one. We may have pushed too deep. And then as you can see, the market just continues to push down. It got a little bit stubborn at this point. It didn't want to break structure. And then eventually it pushed the downside. So that was it. That was a wrap. But I hope that explanation really can help you and understand how I'm correlating and finding confluence with my 4H time frame based on the structure that it builds up. What we were able to identify in the 15 minute time frame in terms of the strong trend to the upside, price failing to break above, looking for that continuation on the 4H time frame as a push phase and as we go over to that 4h time frame as you'll see here we had that push phase as we said that exhaustion phase and now we had that continuation so that's where we wrap this video up i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please make sure you smash that like button subscribe if you haven't already and until next time take care